This is Fauna Park in the grounds of Sydney's Macquarie University. And it's dedicated to the study of lizards, birds, fish and spiders. But the reason I'm here today is to find out about some incredible research that's helping save our native frogs from extinction, especially our green and golden bell frog. Anthony Waddle is a US-born PhD science fellow and conservation biologist in the Applied Biosciences Department. He set up research to tackle a fungus that is killing off frog species. Anthony, great to meet and what a space. Frogs are really special to me. Yeah, uh, they're part of my life, my backyard, but you know, you're really out there resolving some big problems. Yeah, so my research is working on chytrid fungus. Chytrid is an invasive aquatic pathogen and it has an infectious spore that swims through water, finds a frog and it attacks its skin and destroys its ability to hold on to water and also electrolytes that they need for their heart to function and at cardiac arrest. So this is a global pandemic pretty much for frogs. Yeah, the, the fungus has spread worldwide and it's caused over 90 extinctions. And this makes it the worst infectious disease ever. Nothing has caused this much devastation and, and neither cats nor rats nor cane toads, none of that compares. How did it end up getting to yeah. the continent here? So as far as we know, it just arrived once uh, around 1978 through the port of Brisbane and it spread nationwide. Today, we're looking at our native Australian green and golden bell frogs and they've been really hammered um, by chytrid fungus. And in fact, in Australia, six species have already gone extinct. So what exactly is going on here in all of these tanks? Yeah, so these are the way that we hold our frogs. We put netting over the top. What that does is it keeps wild frogs out. So wild frogs have chytrid. Um, and we're right next to a pond. All the frogs there would have chytrid. And we want to keep it out of here because these are really susceptible species. So your research has been credited with solving the problem of this frog pandemic. Yeah, this is a really simple innovation. What you're looking at here, we call a frog sauna. It's a very simple setup, a vegetable greenhouse and a pile of masonry bricks. But uh, what you may not know is that it provides a situation where the frogs can cure themselves. So Kitcher likes to be cold. Um, and in winter, there's big outbreaks of chytrid, and just like the human flu, there's seasonal uh, epidemics. So there's big outbreaks in, in the winter. So during this time, this is when they get infected and die. But by putting these out in the really bright Australian winter sun, they heat up. The frogs like to be warm. They like this habitat. They increase their body temperatures and they stop their infections. So from a gardener's point of view, you're effectively creating a microclimate. Yeah, and it's a really like low input of work. It's a, just a pile of uh, masonry bricks. They cost about a dollar each. Put a $40 little veggie greenhouse over the top and really accessible and feasible way that people can lend a hand in helping this crisis. What's the technique? Oh, it's a bit of gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> You've got longer legs. <laughs> You'll be all right. I can see how the greenhouse serves a specific purpose, but what's the function here of the bricks? Yeah, well, the, the bricks are actually where the frogs find their home when they sit. They're made of clay, so they bring lots of moisture from the ground. It gives them a nice, humid and hot place to sit. And they seek out these little refuges, these little holes and the cracks in between them. Oh, there's so one. So as I pull them out, yeah, yeah, there's one making his home in the, the <gasps> holes. The bricks are heating up. That also heats up their body. They use their habitat to get warm. So let's grab another brick here. Oh, there's a couple more frogs in this one. Oh, look. This little fella's sticking his head out. Yeah, this is a really healthy looking male green and golden bell frog. And you can really tell how they've gotten their name because he is these amazing, gorgeous, bright green and golden colors. He's right in the, the front of the breeding season. It's about to start soon. So he's got a nice throat coloration. His forearms are huge. And that's for um, kind of fighting other boys and um, to grabbing onto the girls that he likes. Now, us gardeners are a pretty practical mob. How can we go about building one of these saunas at our place? Yeah, it's really simple. Um, you get 10 of these uh, really cheap masonry bricks. You paint them black with furniture paint. Once it's dry, it's fine for the frogs. 
and I just build a little apartment building for them. And how I do that is I grab three bricks that'll be used for the base. You put them approximately your thumbs width apart. Uh, this little gap is important so frogs can get in between as well as in the holes. And then you take three more bricks perpendicular. And then finally, this is our top four. This is where our VIP frogs will be. <laughs> yeah, did I buy extra? <laughs> Absolutely. And then I have one last brick. This kind of just holds the whole structure together. And that's it. That's the brick part. So now that that's done, what's the next step? So we make it into a sauna. And to do that, uh, we first have our frame built of our greenhouse. And then we make it into a true sauna by taking this cover here and putting it over the top. And what this does is it, it holds in a bit more heat and also it um, holds on to that humidity that the frogs need. So I put it on just like this. And I want to leave a little bit of a gap at the bottom so the frogs can get in and out. Ah, okay, that's key. Yeah, and if there's a little bit of extra on top, that's fine. So where should people set a sauna like this up? So you want to put it where there's frogs. So um, around frog habitat or nearby frog habitat, you can think of a place that has a bit of vegetation, maybe some water, moist ground, and you need sun, somewhere that gets a bit of uh, sun throughout the day. And what about a timing point of view? When do you set it up and do you leave it set up? Yeah, so in Sydney, Kitchard really ramps up around the end of March, early April, so autumn, and setting them up around then and leaving them up until uh, late spring, so maybe November, and then they don't need to be up anymore after that. So are other species going to see the sauna and think, hey, I'm heading in? Yeah, absolutely. So we have these set up in wild populations, and we find all sorts of frogs inside. What an amazingly simple remedy to a massive national and global problem. What Anthony and the team here at Macquarie Uni are doing is helping save our native frogs from extinction. This is citizen science at its best. Let's get on board and help him out.